Welcome to the Sermon Audio Podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our gospel reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our souls. Help us to remember that we are your baptized children. And help us to remember what comes to us through baptism and how it comes. Help us to recognize it is only through you that baptism is in power. And may we know and feel and embrace and enjoy the gift that you have given, and remember all that it means for us as we are your dear children. In your name, amen. All right, so what have you ever done to protect someone else? What have you ever done to protect someone else? Kathy? Lied. Lied? Not the most laudable thing, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Susan. Gave away a car. <laughs> okay. You took away a car. Were you naughty, Rachel? <laughs> okay. Dina. I always, if I'm driving and have to stop fast, try to protect the person next to me. Rather case it better. <laughs> okay. Yes. Throwing my arms around them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 1960 seatbelt, right? <laughs> okay. Anybody else? What? Okay. Uh, during the pandemic, one of the things that wasn't communicated well enough or correctly was the purpose of masks. A mask was never worn to protect yourself. Masks were intended always to protect others from you so that anything that you had couldn't be transmitted to someone else. And so that was always the purpose of masks, if you got that picture. So when you were out in public, you weren't protecting yourself from somebody else. You were protecting someone else from yourself. That was the purpose of mass. And I think it, it didn't go far enough or communicate well enough that real purpose in mask wearing. You know, I can think of the things that I have done to try uh, to protect Mary when I'm ill, when I got a cold or flu or something. Uh, even though I love my wife, I won't kiss her when I'm sick. I won't hold her hand when I'm sick. And I'll try to, uh, as I'm laying in bed, breathe the other direction you know, so that she's not picking up what I've got. And, and the purpose of that is always out of love to desire to protect that other person. And so as we listen to this uh, passage on baptism, I want you to hear that part that Alex talked about with the children. And if you could bring up the gospel reading again, I want you to, to see this uh, again. Because we recognize what John recognizes and like Alex brought out with the kids, John felt that this was weird. This was wrong. This wasn't the right way to go about this. Notice what happens in verse 14. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. What does that instantly tell us about John? What does John know about himself? I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner and I need what baptism offers. In particular, John's thinking along what his baptism was all about. 
Because John's baptism is a little bit different. And John's baptism was a little bit different in as John talked about its purpose. Earlier in the same chapter of Matthew, John talks about that. Would you put up that verse, please? John said in, in verse 11, I baptize you with water for <laughs> repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So right away, John recognizes about baptism what? Go back to the, the gospel reading again. He needs repentance because he is a sinner. And that's where all of us are at. We all need repentance. We're all sinners. And therefore, we need that part of at least John's baptism, but also baptism into Christ. But John knows something else. Notice the second phrase that John speaks. And do you come to me? What is he saying? You are different than I am. You don't need repentance. You don't need that part of baptism. You don't need what baptism is given. Why? I don't get it. I don't understand why you're coming when you don't need this. Now, have any of you felt like, what's the deal? Why does Jesus need to be baptized? But it all comes to what Jesus' response is. Jesus' response in verse 15, let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Who's righteousness? Not ours. Jesus' righteousness. Because that's the only righteousness that matters. See, Jesus' righteousness is the only righteousness that matters because only Jesus' righteousness can be perfect. Only Jesus can be perfect. And in order for us to receive that perfection... Everything as far as keeping God's law he had to do, but also everything as far as doing God's will he had to do. And so in order for that righteousness to be perfect, this had to happen. He was doing it not for himself, but for us. He didn't need what baptism offers. We do. And the only way to make that happen was to fulfill all of God's will. And that was what was most important. See, we know this is God's plan. We know this is God's will. God makes that extremely evident to us. He makes it extremely evident in how he responds to all this. You know, um, we just went through a, a, an election season. And as we went through this election season, you heard various political candidates being endorsed by other organizations, political candidates, so on and so forth. Put up that picture if you would. And isn't it interesting, you've got politicians endorsing other politicians. Forgive me if you don't like this, but it's true. Liars endorsing other liars. But who endorses Jesus? Right? Think about what steps the Father took to make sure that we understood he endorses Jesus. Go back to the gospel reading again. Next uh, slide, if you would. And immediately when Jesus baptized, as Jesus was baptized, he immediately went up from the water and behold, first thing is the heavens open. And it's not like a little patch of clouds moved away so the sun could shine through. Heaven is open. What this means is a pocket of heaven is now visible in the sky for everyone to see right in. Particularly Jesus and John seeing this pocket of heaven open up. 
revealing the glory of God, revealing all the angels, revealing everything that heaven was. And so this is the first part of the Father's endorsement. The second part of the Father's endorsement is the Spirit, right? Next thing that we see, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. So here's the second part. And by the way, as we think about this, we, this is one of the parts of Scripture, and probably the best part of Scripture, that shows all three persons of the Trinity working in concert for our salvation. Isn't this wonderful? And that's why this is a wonderful passage of Scripture. Because if we see the Son being baptized, we see the Spirit coming to send on him like a dove, and we see what's next. And behold, the third part of his endorsement, behold, a voice from heaven said, say it with me, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. There is no greater endorsement. Everything that he, Jesus, was doing right at that moment, the Father said, this is good. This is my will. This accomplishes what I want to do what we as the Trinity want to do for the salvation of man. This is pleasing to me. So when we face life, we have to remember the identity that God has given to us in our baptism. He's changed us. He's changed us from being a sinner in the darkness of hopelessness to a saint having been washed in the perfection of Jesus' righteousness in the blood that he shed from his cross and the resurrection power that he gives by his own resurrection. And as we face life, we're going to face difficult times, trials, hardships. We're going to face pandemics. We're going to face terrible destructive activity in our world, but in the midst of all of that, we need to remember who we are. Who he's made us to be in the waters of our baptism. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again, and I want you to remember it, because it's so important. Every time we feel in one of those places, we have to say to ourselves, I am a redeemed baptized child of God. Because everything that Jesus was, as we hear in our epistle reading today, as Paul talks about baptism, everything that Jesus was, everything that he did in his life, his death, and his resurrection come to us in the waters of our baptism. And as that comes to us, we are redeemed here. And all of that is attached to us here. Say it with me. I am a redeemed, baptized child of God. Say it again. I am a redeemed, baptized child of God. So no matter what we're facing in life, trials, hardships, pains, disasters, that identity doesn't change because he gave it to us. His gift. Making us his own. Say it again. I'm a redeemed, baptized child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.